Shabbat Shalom, sisters and brothers, daughters of Zion, is coming to you on a Shabbat. And um, I am so excited because I love the preparation of Shabbat and everything about it. I mean, down to, you know, just the, the thinking about it, it all week long and, and in preparation on Friday of the cooking and, you know, cleaning the house, getting all the clothes and everything ready for the Shabbat and just, you know, inviting over um, other believers that are in this truth that really do know and understand um, what it is that we're we're doing and, you know, hoping that others come and follow along too. But um, I'd like to say Shabbat Shalom and uh, honor and glory and praise to the Most High. Um, I'd like to say Shalom to all the brothers out there, the Akiam, the prophets that are and daughters that are bringing this truth forward from all four corners of the earth in truth and sincerity. Um, keep on, you know, staying in the truth. Be strong. Um, you know, stay prayed up. And, you know, I'm thinking about you as I hope that you're praying for me as well. Um, as you know, this is not for the swift, but what we do is um, is for the edification of others that they might be edified and come into the truth so that they are safe and that they know that they have redemption and they're sure of their salvation. That is why we do this work. It's very important. So without further ado, um, my topic today is really um, obedience. Um, I do apologize if you haven't seen any new videos posted up over the last um, couple of weeks, I believe, or so. Um, but I am back, and I just wanted to, I was thinking, you know, about just how the world is now and what things are going on in the world and why it seems so cold and such a um, harsh, harsher um, place to exist, you know, especially when you're in the truth, you really um, have more discernment to really see what's truly um, unfolding here because we understand the signs of the ends of time and, um, you know, we, we can interpret the times that we're in and that's very important because we do know these scriptures that um, pertain to that so I just want to read from and excuse me for looking down um, the second chapter excuse me second Timothy the third chapter and it reads um, it, this is called perilous times and uh, perilous men okay so it says you know um, it says but know that uh, in the last days, perilous times will come for men, you know, will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, you know, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, um, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of the most high having the form of godliness but really denying uh its power and from such people turn away wow now i just want to say also that you know these these are not at all the fruits of the spirit by a long shot um these display characteristics of people that are lost, people that are truly, um, you know, reprobate or have been turned over to a reprobate mind. Um, when you see, you know, this type of, uh, these types of, of relationships going on or not even relationships always, but just interactions and situations happening, you know, in your own eyes, you've seen, you know, exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know that we something is going on and it, and it's certainly not like you know the fresh beginning of the world so it because it's getting really it says a love of many will wax cold and that is so true because i see it in the workplace i see it everywhere you know um but you know in the fourth chapter of second timothy it talks about preach the word and i just want to say this and and understand where i'm going here it says preach the word in season and out of season um you know, and we know what seasons are, but I just had to kind of segue that in because it is important that we try our best 
those of us that uh, understand that we were called to bring this word forward. Um, and the reason why I say that, because those of us that, you know, many are called, few are chosen, but those of us that yield to that call and say, yes, Lord, send me, I will go. Um, we have a greater responsibility and we will be held more strictly because of it. Um, because if we don't bring forth the, he said, preach the kingdom. Okay. The kingdom of heaven is means that, okay, we're closer to our salvation than we've ever been before. So in preaching the kingdom, uh, that means there's another kingdom coming and this kingdom is going to end. Uh, because it also, um, the scriptures say that, you know, uh, Esau is the end of this world and Jacob is the beginning of the next. So that next is the next kingdom. And that is the kingdom that the scripture speaks of, meaning the new Jerusalem. Okay. When we are gathered, all of Israel that have been keeping his commandments and doing the will of the most high, uh, with all of our heart and loving him with all of our heart and soul and not sinning and not doing the commandments, which is the sin. Um, you know, we're going to be judged according to our works. Okay. So we want to make sure that we are accurate in this word and that we are studying and, and trained up and, and really bringing forth the word of truth that Yahweh Shai came saying to preach. You know, he said, preach the kingdom. So we understand that the kingdom means we're preaching in these last days, which are perilous times. So I just wanted to kind of break that down a little bit more so that you understand why it is that we're coming out with these scriptures and why it is that, you know, I'm not saying that I'm a part of any camp or other ministry out here or any kind of organization. Um, we have our covering and our own um uh, church and, and fellowship uh, that we do in our home. And I have a covering, um, which is our ministry, you know, and that is our bishop that uh, ensures that we stay in line and that we're built up and encouraged to bring this word forth. So um, it's really important that, you know, we're all trained and not cut loose to teach, you know, the women because until they understand that we um, un have the correct understanding of this word. So there, there for me has been, you know, quite a bit of chastening and purging. And I mean, it's a mindset change for us that bring this word. It's not easy to do because, you know, we first needed to, to break down those and, 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 uh, you know, layers of, of, of this world, that thinking, that bondage mindset of it going the way of the world, which the Bible says going the way of the heathens, but thinking like them, acting like them, talking like them, doing the things that they do and talking in the ways that they talk and acting like they act and thinking like they act, which is the most dangerous, dangerous position to be in, which is why I was seeking the truth for different reasons because I was just curious years ago about in 2005 who uh, Yahweh's family was, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus. I just wanted to know, well, where are those people today? So I, in my quest, in my research through the scriptures, I realized, um, you know, I started stumbling across some scriptures that kept uh, going back to Israel, Israel, Israel. Then I realized that the Bible was written by Israelites for Israel. Okay. Now it, 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 salvation is for the Gentiles too, because the, um, the prophets, you know, the most High wanted to make Israel jealous because they were so disobedient. Okay. And that is the truth. So in our disobedience, the, the Gentiles, you know, were grafted in, so to speak, as it states in the new Testament. So they are, um, they have a place, you know, in the new kingdom as well, but it will not be um, in the inner courts with the, you know, uh, with the royalty, uh, because the most high has order in that place. And there's a different, uh, there's going to be a new government set up in that time. And it will not be anything like when I say government, not structured at all, the way you see this 
excuse me, but when I say, but this um, worldly government is set up, it's not going to have, you know, the president and cabinets and all. I don't mean that for those of you that really aren't in the truth. And, you know, I'm trying to help you follow along with what I'm saying. The government will be on Yahweh's shoulder, whom we call Jesus. Okay. It will rest with him. He will be the, he will be the high priest. Okay. Sitting on the throne, judging all the nations. He will be the one sitting on David's throne, okay? And we will be with him, and we will see his face, finally. It's going to be the most beautiful time. I mean, a word really can't express it. I, I can't even give it a word because it's so beyond what we can even think or imagine. So this is what we're all striving for. All of us that know and understand the truth and the wisdom that comes with it, it, it can be a heaviness, but we know that we want to help you out there that doesn't understand it or is new coming into this truth. Really, really understand why it's so important that you hold true to this doctrine that um, is the word of the most high. This is not a new religion. This is, has nothing to do with religion. In fact, religion is what has people in the state that they're in. It's like a hypnotic state because they're only receiving the word from their pastors that are preaching on Sunday mornings when the Sabbath has never been Sunday. That's a day that they worship deities and, and pagan gods. The Sabbath never changed. In fact, that was how the the peop, the children of Israel, or even from Genesis all the way through the Bible, knew how to count the days. They didn't have clocks back then. They knew how to count the holy high days and their um, celebrations and observances with by the um, the Sabbaths, because it's every seven days. See, so that never changed. You know, we we don't have three hundred and sixty five days on our calendar. They're three hundred and sixty four days according to this um, Jillian cal calendar or Gregorian calendar, whichever you want to call it, Greek or Roman calendar, but we go to according to the Enoch calendar, which originally were 10 months only. And so that is how we know when our holy high days are and what months and days they fall on. Okay, and then our New Year's is in the springtime. That's when everything is new. So there's a lot to learn. I'm not going to get too far off the topic here because um, there's a lot of research and studying that you must do so that you, um, it says, be careful to keep my commandments. Okay, and in, in Revelation, um, the 22nd chapter, it says, do, you know, blessed is he that keeps my commandments that he might enter through the gates and so that his name is in, you know, written in the book of life. That is pretty serious. So for people, if anyone tells you that the law is done away with, then there that's incorrect because it, why would it be in the book of Re revelation saying those that keep my commandments. And then in the book of John, first John, it says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Well, then the commandments are not done away with, obviously. And it says that if we don't keep the commandments in the Old Testament, you were put to death and stoned, which happened to a man, um, okay, because he was grabbing food out in the field and on the Sabbath day, and he wasn't supposed to, okay? So, but today, it, you still will inherit death, all right, but only on judgment day. Uh, you know, uh, it, that's why it says not all, you know, we all fall asleep, but not all of us will wake up into our eternal home and glory, some to eternal, you know, glory, some to eternal shame. And that's because we haven't been keeping the commandments. It is so serious, people, I'm telling you. I love my family. I love my friends. And I try to tell everybody that I come in contact with, even, you know, uh, people that I just run into in the grocery store line, I ask them, you know, what church do you go to or what kind of doctrine are you learning you know, for your salvation. I mean, because it's important to me, m their blood is not going to be on my hands because I have accepted the charge of the Most High to say, yes, I will bring this word forth. I will help to teach your daughters of Zion what they need to do to teach their children and other daughters. And um, because we're not supposed to teach men, but we can teach the women, but at least I'm doing my best. That's why I have a YouTube channel. So prayerfully and hopefully that this um, my videos do not fall on deaf ears because he does say that 
for some, you know, that know the truth, it, eventually, if you don't keep the commandments and this, keep the Sabbath and keep it holy and not by not going your way and doing what you want to do, um, and it is not a day of pleasure for yourself. It's, it's, you know, you have to be in the scriptures, singing songs of praise, resting in him, you know, bowing down, praying, giving him all the praise and glory all day long until sundown. Um, so it's, it's not a day that you can just do whatever you want to do because he says, be holy because I am holy. See, we were set apart. We were sanctified. And he said, you know, keep my Sabbath. This is what he did for us. He made Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. Okay, so that we could rest because he rested after he made creation. And he said, oh, this is good. So then he said, okay, I'm going to make my Sabbath a day of rest because I'm resting. And then it, I'll hallow it and sanctify it and make it a holy day for my children. So, Salakia. So this is not a day that we can take lightly. We're not supposed to be out shopping and, you know, visiting people just to watch movies and kick back and drink beer and um, have talk about what we can talk about all week and things that we can do all week. He gives us six days, six days to do everything else we want to do. And But even then, there are uh, regulations for Israelites. OK, um, you know, regarding there's there's over 600 laws, but I'm just saying disobedience, which is the topic of, of this video, can go and, um, you know, on and on. I mean, there's so many different ways that we can be disobedient and uh, by not being careful to keep his commandments. OK, the commandments are not just the first 10. They are, if you read the first five books of the Bible, which uh, some call the first five books of Moses or the book of the law, that is where you can start and you will find um, all that, that I'm talking about because he was talking to the children of Israel, okay? And those that were joined with them that were not, that were Gentiles, that lived in the gates and in their, um, in their geographical towns, which were named after each of the 12 tribes and other um, nations outside of Israel. Okay. So just a little hint to the wise being sufficient, knowing that we do have land, the land of Canaan. It's, it's a lot of land there. That is the promised land. That is our land that we will eventually be back. Um, well, we're going to, it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, but our new Jerusalem will be a lot different than what's going on over there. Now we're not supposed to be there now. I don't care what anyone tells you that that's scripture. So just, you know, understand that we are here and we are uh, in captivity in the land of bondage, but because we can't freely always do everything we um, need to do as Israelites. So we're all trying to do our very best. So I just wanted to say, you know, give you that piece, but just remember to read second Timothy, the third chapter and understanding that we are different people, you know, second Peter, Verse three and nine tells us that we are a, a special people, a holy nation, you know, a chosen generation, a people unto himself. So we have to act according to that. So Shalom and Shabbat Shalom. And I hope to see you on the next video.